Good morning and welcome to the 2022 University of Florida Homecoming Parade. I'm Sean Humphrey. And I'm Ophelia Jacobson. We are so excited to have you here with us this morning as the parade rolls up 13th Street in this Gainesville tradition. Our Gator Nation is strong and it's diverse. We've got people joining us who span across states, countries, and even hemispheres. You can join us right here and leave a comment down below. Tell us what you think of our broadcast. Absolutely. As for us, we'll be tuning in live from Gainesville, Florida, telling you a little bit about the organizations represented here today. And we'll also be having some guests joining us on set. Plus, we'll be highlighting some of the things that make it great to be a Florida Gator. It truly is great to be a Florida Gator. It's even greater to be an alumni of this great university. We'd like to take the time to thank our sponsor for today's broadcast, the UF Alumni Association. Without them, this broadcast would not be possible. And if I'm ready and you're ready and we hope the parade behind us is ready soon, let's get going. Absolutely. As we're talking about the 2022 homecoming parade, we also want to take a trip back in time and take a look at some of the traditions that UF's homecoming parade has had. WUFT's Anna Bernstein tells us more. The 99th celebration of the University of Florida Homecoming Parade brings generations of students, professors, alumni, and fans from around the world and around the country to celebrate their Gator pride. U of Homecoming traditions began in 1924. Since then, it's become the largest homecoming celebration run by students in the country. Wonderful way that we can get every single part of the Gainesville community involved in something that students get to plan. For Emma, it's amazing to see students, families, alumni, and the Gainesville community support such an iconic event. Her family is what led her to get involved. My entire family is, grew up in Gainesville um, as well as went to the University of Florida. So I grew up coming to the University of Florida for football games and homecoming events. So that was a big part of my life growing up. When I think about family, it's kind of tied to the University of Florida. When she thinks about family, the University of Florida is what comes to mind. The most important to me is the beginning of the parade. It's this really special moment where all of the hard work is culminated in this one moment it's like 12 o'clock and all the advisors stand at the corner um, of southwest 8th and 13th and getting to see that last year was moving i cried i'm a crier so i cried when the parade started and i'll cry again this year the voice of the university's mascot albert has kicked off gator girl since the 1980s carl kaufman says that gator girl is always fun and entertaining growl has always been something that i've enjoyed donating my time and efforts and uh, knowledge and resources as an alumni even Kaufman's daughter Kelly began attending the event in a stroller when she was only two years old. For Kaufman, it's an honor to still be part of such a big event for the Gator Nation. Yes, we're in the O'Connell Center, not the stadium, but it still is Gator Growl, and it still is you know, the longest running student produced show in the country. And uh, we're coming up on 100 years pretty darn soon, so that's going to be fun. Anna Bernstein, WUFT. You know, I grew up in a military family, so I've lived all over the place. It's nice to see such a strong culture right here in Gainesville. Absolutely, and you can definitely see how this parade would make many Gainesville natives super emotional. I know I'm just super excited for all of the festivities this weekend. What about you? Absolutely, from the Gator Growl to the homecoming parade to the football game, it really is a great time to be a Florida Gator, even though it's always a great time. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that makes it so great to be a Florida Gator, the fact that we are a top five public university, not once, but twice. Two times. Two times in a row. We're going to send it to Kendall Brandt, and she's going to tell you more about that. It is truly great to be a Florida Gator, at least according to Marcos Medina. Um, you know, top five, absolutely. Top education in the nation. You know, that's all you need. That's all you need. Students were not surprised to hear the University of Florida ranked top five in the U.S. News and World Report for a second year in a row. I mean, just par for the course. It's par for the course because, you know, you know, top university in Florida, top five in the nation. And so I'm, I'm very proud of my school. I think we get a valuable education. Sean Carey says UF was his number one pick because of the ranking prior to reaching top five. People talk about UCF's engineering or, or uh, FSU's uh, politics and everything like that, and they still don't rank as high as, high as us in either of those departments. So I'm just saying, you know, proud to be a Florida Gator. Medina agrees. I mean, expected, obviously. I mean, top five. We were top five last year with top five again. You know, we're going for a top three next year. I mean, that's us, you know, it's that education, it's all of it, all of it, you know, we're top five. The top five ranking just makes both students even more hype for homecoming week. Homecoming is going to be dope, it's going to be live, be there or be square. 
Both students plan on attending all events so they can say, Go Gators. Kendall Brandt, WUFT News. You heard that student be there or be square for all of the festivities this weekend. We have Gator Growl tonight at 7 p.m. And you know, one of the things that makes this university so great, the students. Now, we may be a little biased, but I think the students here are pretty great. Absolutely. Students, young and old, have been here for generations upon generations. This school opened in 1853, so that means you've got 80 90 years worth of alumni who are alive right now and have stories to tell. Absolutely, and we want to hear some of the stories from current students. Christian, Christina Santiago spoke to some students on campus. Here's what they had to say about what homecoming means to them. Welcome to our homecoming special. The University of Florida's homecoming parade is one of the largest student-run parades in the nation. This UF tradition has proven to be a staple as it has now been around for 99 years. Many fond memories have been made through this parade, and here's what Gainesville native Christine Lacasio has to say about what homecoming means to her. It's what defined being a Gator is for me. Um, it's really just like everybody, no matter who you are, no matter where you came from, what you like love to do, all your passions, it's celebrated in UF Homecoming because no matter all of our like unique differences, we are all a part of the Gator Nation and that's what Homecoming celebrates, that we are all in one together and we can celebrate our love for this amazing school together and our love for each other because we're all connected in that way. This parade embodies the message of community spirit as the parade contains various Gainesville organizations, UF cheerleaders, and the Gator football team. UF track and field athlete Allison Drummond shares one of her favorite parade memories. So when I was eight, um, my mom took us all down here and we sat in like folding chairs and we watched the parade and we ate snacks and we just watched everyone and the cheerleaders came by and they all waved to me and threw me beads and that's probably my favorite memory. The homecoming parade includes people of all ages. In the parade, you will get to see children dancing, many Gator football players, and Gainesville residents. Longtime Gainesville resident and UF parent Shannon Hawes explains why homecoming is such a big factor to the Gainesville community. I mean, it's a tradition. It brings everyone out. It's a holiday in Gainesville. And a lot of people that move to Gainesville are like, wait, why are we closed on Friday, a random October Friday? And I'm like, it's UF homecoming. It's a tradition. Christina Santiago, WUFT. What does homecoming mean to you, Sean? Oh, man, just the pageantry of it. I love seeing the whole city come together because, like I said, I'm from a military family. I've been all over the place, and I've seen a lot of different cultures in a lot of different areas. So this is special to Gainesville specifically. What does homecoming mean to you, Ophelia? Absolutely. Well, I think it's just a great time for, like you said, people who have been living in Gainesville and also the students that attend this university to come together and really show their pride for the blue and orange. Absolutely. And don't forget about the football game. We can't forget about the football game. Auburn in 2019 was special to me this weekend. Missouri, I really hope it's a W. I'm not getting up for a nooner to watch the Gators lose. Absolutely. We'll send it to WUFT's Chris Will for a preview of this homecoming game. It's Florida versus Missouri on Saturday, and in recent history, this matchup has not failed to bring the drama. With kickoff set for noon at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, here's what you need to know. The Missouri Tigers lead the all-time series with the Gators 6-5. Since joining the SEC, the series is actually tied 5-5. And what was already a conference rivalry may be getting even more intense. It all started two years ago when the Tigers last made the trip to the Swamp. An arguably late hit on former Florida quarterback Kyle Trask just before halftime resulted in a brawl, with former Gators head coach Dan Mullen in the thick of it all. Mullen then showed up to the post-game press conference in a Darth Vader costume. Still Halloween, baby. <laughs> and while Mullen's stunt was the weekend of Halloween, Tigers head coach Eli Drinkwitz must have remembered that moment because when Missouri beat Florida in OT last season, he showed up with a lightsaber of his own. May the force be with you. Mullen was fired the next day. Taking a look at the matchup for this season, both teams are in the search for their first SEC win on the year. Missouri comes in at 2-3, and three, but put the entire country on notice last week when they gave Georgia a real scare. 
The Tigers led all the way up until about four minutes left in the final quarter. It's something Florida head coach Billy Napier says is a sign of how strong the conference is. Uh, no easy outs in the SEC. You know, it's, it's going to be a challenge every time, and certainly that this past week was a great example of that. Florida comes in at 3-2 and two with quarterback Anthony Richardson quickly building momentum. The Gators QB has almost 700 passing yards and six total touchdowns over the last two weeks. And there is one important link between the two teams, and that is Tigers linebacker Tyron Hopper. The former Florida Gator leads the team in sacks and total tackles. Napier says he's certainly a difference maker on the defense and will be the guy the Gators need to look out for. Vegas has Florida as an 11-point favorite. Chris Will, WUFT Sports. Welcome to WFT Sports. I'm Chris Will. And I'm Christina Santiago. Now Vegas also has this game at about a 55 point over under. And that's about fair, but it gets a little iffy when you get to the ESPN odds. They give the Florida Gators a 71% chance of winning this game. And with some of the inconsistencies, do you think that's a fair odds? I honestly find it very surprising as Mizzou almost beat the reigning national champions, the Georgia Bulldogs, last week 26-22. Florida Gators and Mizzou have had a pretty up and down season and going into this game we have to look at quarterback stats. Anthony Richardson has the better stats. He's thrown 1,100 yards, has rushed an additional 241 yards and has nine touchdowns. Brady Cook has thrown 1,000 yards and has seven touchdowns. We need to look into defense though as Mizzou has a pretty strong defense defense that has proven to be a challenge to its competitors. Yeah, and in the middle of that defense is Florida transfer Tyron Hopper at linebacker. He leads the team in sacks and solo tackles, and they'll be looking to bring that to the homecoming game. And speaking of homecoming and that noon kickoff, Mr. Two Bits will be Florida Gator great Chandler Parsons. Back to you guys. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Chris Will and Christina Santiago. I've got to admit, I've got a nervous feeling in the pit of my stomach about this game. It's a nooner, and it's Missouri, and they've given us trouble over the last few years. Are you going to the game, Ophelia? Absolutely. You can catch me in row 84 in the swamp tomorrow at noon, so it's definitely going to be pretty hot up there. Yeah. Are you going to the game? <laughs> I may go to the game. I'm not sure yet, but the sun certainly doesn't discriminate. It's going to be hitting you hard in the 84th row, but it's going to be hitting everybody in Absolutely. the middle of the sky at midday. And we'll send it over to WFT's Julia Haley with a full weather forecast for this entire homecoming weekend. Celebration is in the atmosphere and so are sunny skies. I'm forecaster Julia Haley with your homecoming forecast. Starting off with the parade, currently 78 degrees, rising into the mid 80s throughout this afternoon. Now we do have less humidity in the area due to some northerly winds, giving us some dry pockets, making for a perfect weekend. Now later this evening, if you're going to Gator Growl, make sure to bring a jacket with you. When you leave Gator Growl, it's going to be in the 60s. So it's going to feel a little chilly and tomorrow for your homecoming game tailgate you are going to want to have a jacket as well rising from the 60s to the 70s and then even to the 80s as we do have a blast of warm air bringing even upper 80s temperatures into our area now another day of sunny skies for tomorrow and even for today this weekend sunny all around back to you Thank you, Julia. We also want to give a warm welcome to all of our alumni that are coming home this weekend for the big game, for the parade, just to celebrate what it means to be a Florida Gator. Absolutely, and it's going to be a great time tonight. Gator Growl. Ophelia, are you going to Gator Growl? Absolutely. 7 p.m. Flow Rida. I will definitely be there. What about you? Well, I'm not going to Gator Growl, but I do know about some of the history oh. of Gator Growl. We've had comedians like Robin yeah. Williams and Rodney Dangerfield. We've even had yeah, Snoop like D.O. Double G but. himself. That is incredible. I'm definitely looking forward to the concert tonight. And I hear it's one of the largest student-run pep rallies in the nation, which is quite impressive. But I'm not surprised, considering we are a top five public university. Absolutely. We like to win. Absolutely. And and we talk about okay. over the years. Well, I mean, oh Florida God. Gym has hosted Hootenannies and Spring Frolics. And the Gator Growl used to be in the swamp thousands upon thousands, tens of thousands of people. It's absolutely amazing to see that this celebration is still going and Gator Growl is still a central part of what we do here at Homecoming every year. 
And we'd also like to take the moment to thank our sponsor once again, the UF Alumni Association. We'll be hearing from someone from that association later on in the program. But again, without them, this broadcast wouldn't be possible. Now, again, like we've mentioned, we have the homecoming parade starting here in a few moments. And we're super excited to see what kind of parades and floats we have coming up 13th Street. Absolutely. Welcome Good. back to the UF 2022 Homecoming Parade. I'm Ophelia Jacobson. And I'm Sean Humphrey. Thank you for joining us. Our Gator Nation is strong and it's diverse, and that's why we're welcoming everybody homes. People span across different states, countries, and even hemispheres to join us today. Leave a comment down below and tell us what you think about our broadcast today. And also tell us where you're tuning in from, whether it's right here in Gainesville or across the ocean. We'd love to know where our alumni network spans. And as for us, we'll be right here in Gainesville. The parade will be beginning shortly right behind us. We'll be telling you all about the organizations represented here today. We'll also be having some guests right here on set. It's great to be a Florida Gator, especially on a day like today, and you'll see everything happen behind us. I know I'm excited. Are you excited, Ophelia? I'm definitely very excited. We're so excited to have lots of students, faculty, our alumni here today. Speaking of alumni, we just like to take the chance to thank our sponsor, the UF Alumni Association. Without them, this broadcast wouldn't be possible. Sean, are you ready to kick this off? Absolutely. Let's kick this off like the game tomorrow. No footballs in the sky unless some kids start throwing them around. Yeah, hopefully let's keep everything safe on the street. Um, I know after today we're going to have Gator Growl starting at 7 p.m. Flo Rida will be there. I will be there. Sean, will you be there? I will not be there, but I might hear the music from wherever I end up. I hope the cheers are loud enough for me to be able to hear them. Yep, and we also have the football game kicking off at noon tomorrow. We will be playing the Missouri Tigers. We just had an update from our sports anchors. It looks like it's going to be a great game. We're super excited. All right, we're going to throw it to Kennedy Mason, my friend, and she's going to give you some new knowledge. Hey, yeah, my name is Kennedy Mason with WUFT News. I'm here live at the 99th Annual Homecoming Parade. I'm here with Chris. He's an Alachua County resident, and he just ran two miles in the Gator Gallop. Tell me, Chris, how are you feeling after this run? Um, definitely tired. It was a good exercise, really sweaty, but fun time. Awesome, and look at his Gator gear. It's so awesome. I love it. And is this your first time running in Gator Gallop, or have you done it before? Um, this is my first time. I've never done it before, and it was an experience for sure. Amazing. I know two miles is a lot, so that is so awesome. And what are you looking forward to the most this weekend? Definitely the Missouri Gator game. Uh, I hope we're going to put a good fight against them, and all of our team shows up, and we get a win. Yeah, I'm hoping for a big win, too. I think it's going to be awesome. I'm so excited to play Mizzou. Thank you so much. Can we get a Gator Chomp from you? Woo! Woo! Yeah, thank you, Chris. Woo! And back to you, Ophelia and Sean. Thank you, Kennedy. We're looking forward to that game. And all the Gator sphere here, it's just so electric. You can really feel the energy coming from students, faculty, staff, and alumni. Absolutely. I'm glad my man was doing the chop the right way. Right over left, arms locked at the elbows. Absolutely. Don't forget it. We also have some special reunions going on this weekend. The Association of Black Alumni, the Association of LGBTQ Alumni, the Gator Band Alumni, and Florida Cicerones. All of those reunions will be hosted by the UF College of Journalism and Communications. Absolutely, and our hearts and prayers are with those affected by Hurricane Ian, not just in southwest Florida, but all over this area of the country, even up to South Carolina. And we hope and pray that you all are doing well and keep doing well going forward. 
And speaking of Hurricane Ian, you know, the University of Florida has been doing a lot to help those in need. Um, Ada Gator is something that we have here at the University of Florida where you can donate to help students who were in emergency situations and really need that help now more than ever. Absolutely. And today we have Jess Johnson here with us from the UF Alumni Association. Thank you so much for joining us. Are you kidding? Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. So what is your favorite part of UF Homecoming festivities? Man, there's so much to be happy about, right? For me, it's reconnecting with friends. Right? The Gator Nation extends for decades, and I'm one of the lucky ones who has friends across all those decades. So reconnecting with people, going to fun events like the President's Brunch this morning, being here at the parade, inviting the entire Alachua County community to be here, what's better? Absolutely. How, how's your experience changed over the years? Uh, you know, I don't know that it's changed. I guess that's one of the beauties of being a Gator, right, is that, like, things just continue. Our traditions are really uh, valuable to us, and those are held tight in everybody's uh, hearts. So, but the Gator Nation's bigger, uh, and maybe we're a little bit more enthusiastic, and certainly as being a top five university now, there's a lot more pride. And what better way to show that pride than on your car? Tell us a little bit about UF license plates. I'm glad you bring it up. The University of Florida license plate is one of the best ways that people can show their Gator pride. There are over 93,000 license plates circulating in the state of Florida that are Gator plates. It is the top selling collegiate license plate, as you can imagine. Uh, so I've got one on my truck. I think everybody needs one. I definitely have to put one on my car as well. Hey, I, I'll do it too, especially on the way out as a senior. We can get that number to over 100,000. That'd be cool to me. And can you tell me what a specialty plate purchase supports at the University of Florida? Yeah, it all goes to scholarships. So every time that somebody supports the university with the license plate, they're supporting every year scholarships that help students to become a part of the Gator Nation. Well, you've convinced me to get a UF license plate. Tell us how I can make and people watching at home can make the switch to a UF license plate. It's super easy. You do it with your tax collector here in Alachua County. John Power is a fantastic partner to the university. Uh, so go down to the tax collector's office. You can make an appointment online. Uh, I think the tag is 25 or $30 in addition to your regular registration fees. Uh, they send it to you in the mail. It's super cool. Awesome. And your name's Jess Johnson, not Scooby-Doo, but what's new with the UF plate that you can share with us this year? Uh, Scooby-Doo says that the license plate is going to be a little bit of a surprise. So next week, look out for an announcement during the LSU game about what might be a new design for the license plate. Everybody's going to want one of these. Awesome. Well, you've got me excited. Thank you so much for being here today. I feel like we're going to hear from you again later in the show. And thank you once again to the UF Alumni Association for sponsoring this broadcast today. Uh, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm going to be hanging out watching this parade. Hey. Absolutely. So will we. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, going back to all these festivities here today, I guess what is, has been your favorite memory? being an alumni, looking right. back. So that's sort of easy, because actually she's over behind the camera. My wife was on the homecoming court when we were students, and she wasn't yet my wife. So supporting her during the homecoming pageant, at Gator Grill uh, during that, being in the homecoming parade, she was in the parade, not me. Right? Like I didn't need to be in the parade, but she was in the parade. That's definitely my favorite homecoming memory. And look, it's paid off, right? Got two beautiful children that are behind the camera too, uh, and 15 years of marriage. so. It's pretty easy to answer that question. So you met your wife right here at the University of Florida? In the Rights Union. Wow. That could be you watching at home. You be careful know. whose phone number you get when you're hanging out at a student organization event. Tread carefully in the food court for sure. Yeah. Hey, I'm a football guy. Up. Do you have a favorite football memory? Oh, boy. Man, there's a lot of them. And when I was a student here, of course, Tim Tebow was still throwing the football. So uh, those were some good years in 2005 and 2006 as I was in grad school. Um, but gosh, I guess a great memory is our first national championship. I was lucky to be in New Orleans in the Superdome in, in 1996, uh, watching Danny Warfel lead the Gators to their first national championship. Special year. How do you feel about the game tomorrow? Uh, I'm excited. I think Mizzou's going to have their hands full. You know, the, the Gate, I'm certainly no sports commentator, but I feel like the, uh, the Gators have pulled together a fantastic culture this year. I'm proud of what C Coach Napier is doing. Um, look, that program is up and up. Will you be in attendance? For sure. For sure. I mean, you've got to balance some kids' soccer games in there, so we'll get some of that in. We'll get a little bit of the uh, UF football game in. So, for sure. We come up all the time. We actually live out of town, but always happy to make a trip to Gainesville. And where are you coming from today? In beautiful Tampa. 
Nice. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Awesome. You been to uh, any lightning games downtown? Uh, all the time. Look, the the lightning got a real special season coming up. So we'll see. I don't I don't think we beat the Panthers last night though. I think yeah, we did not beat the Panthers. All right, we're going to uh, keep sending you forward. The parade is coming soon, and we're going to stay right here and bring you everything you need. So tell us a little bit more about what the UF Alumni Association actually does for alumni. Yeah, you know, the UF Alumni Association is probably the best way for Gators to stay connected with the university. Um, it's special communications, interesting events, unique experiences, and ways for alums to continue to be a part of the Gator Nation, contributing their time, their talent, their treasure, in the myriad ways that make this university special. Well, thank you so much again for joining us. We'll be hearing from you again in the broadcast. Enjoy the parade. We'll check in with you later. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. you so much. And you can hear the crowds cheering behind us. We're very excited to see all of the Gators here today. We have students, faculty, staff. We have alumni that are coming in from all over the world just to see this parade and the football game tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, yeah, me too. Most definitely. And you can hear some of the sirens in the background. You see the crowds lining the street up 13th Street. Now, normally, this parade took place on University Avenue. Last year was the first year that it took place up 13th Street, and that's because they installed new speed bumps on University Avenue. So a bit of a change in the parade route, but still amazing nonetheless. Absolutely. It's great to see the parade coming behind us and see the beginnings of what's sure to be a great festivity. Is festivity a good enough word to use? Festivity? Absolutely. Or is that a plural? You know. <laughs> it's going to be a bunch of festivities this weekend. Like we mentioned, we have a Gator Growl tonight, 7 p.m. We have the homecoming Gator Nation tailgate from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Emerson Hall for the Alumni Association members. And then we have kickoff, noon, Gators versus the Missouri Tigers. Yeah, I hope Missouri ends up in misery because I do not want to see them get a win at the Swamp. I don't want to see anybody get a win at the Swamp, but in a festivity like this, when you're welcoming people home, you want to welcome them with a W. Absolutely. I love this police routine here. The first time I saw the parade, it was cool to see them kind of you know, swirl around each other. I don't know what to call it, but I like it. That's all I need to say about that. Yep, and you can see the crowds ready to watch. It's a beautiful day here in Gainesville. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. All right. Goldilocks and the Three Bears would be proud. Yeah. <laughs> so what, uh, what floats, what um, participants are you excited to see today in the parade? I hear there's going to be a lot of Greek life represented here today in the parade. A lot of fraternities, sororities. What about you? Me, I'm excited to see all of the bands. The music is the madness, and I'm mad. I love to see it. Uh, we've got Buholz's band today. We've got Eastside's band. And, of course, the Pride of the Sunshine, the Fighting Gator Marching Band. I love when they come out onto the field. And today, hearing them behind me, being able to hear them at full force when they come by, I just hope they're playing the fight song when I hear them today. That will definitely get people fired up. I absolutely love the band. So we'll definitely be giving you that performance. Well, not us, but we'll be making sure that you can hear that performance hey, all throughout the parade I today. could give you some air trumpet. You know, I used to play trumpet in middle school. I can give you some air trumpet. I got the piano. We got a full band going on here. And if we want to do karaoke, you know the words to the fight song? Absolutely. Who doesn't? Yeah. People who are not true gators. I'm Absolutely. joking. You know, we're all true gators. If you're wearing orange and blue, you're a gator. And you can see the police making their way up 13th Street. Let's listen in on the sirens. Good morning and welcome to the 2022 University of Florida Homecoming Parade. Once again, I'm Sean Humphrey. And I'm Ophelia Jacobson. Thank you so much for joining us here today. If you're just tuning in, we want to know where you're tuning in from. We have alumni across the state, across the nation, across the country even. So leave a comment down below. Where are you tuning in from? Absolutely. We're going to take you back out to the parade right now. The police are doing their routine. Yeah. Homecoming. Welcome home. 
And welcome home to people who have been involved in this parade before. COVID took a year away from us, and we are back to the business right now. And I love to see it. I love to hear it, too. The parade is in full force. Let's check out what it looks like on the street. And I'm Freeho Rar here with Oak Hall Elementary students. We are here with a lot of kids who are visiting the homecoming parade. Um, what are you guys here doing? Um, we're here to have fun, eat cotton candy, and watch a parade. Yeah, we are. And your name's Jack, right? Um, and, yes. And your birthday was this week, right? Yeah, I turned 10. Yeah, so homecoming week birthday. How do you feel about that? Well, I feel pretty excited, a little different. <laughs> do you feel a little older? Yes. We also feel like puberty might come early. <laughs> All right, Jack. Well, that's awesome. Well, and we're also here with the program coordinators who are also from Oak Hall. How are you guys feeling about this parade today? Gorgeous day? Yes, yeah, good. This is my second year working for the parade, so it's really fun. I'm glad that we get to do this again this year. We're excited to get out here with the kids, let them have a good time, enjoy UF culture. It's a good day. Yeah. It is, and it's a gorgeous day out, and it's really hot. And Jack, how are you feeling? It's really hot out. Um, I'm feeling good. Also, I, also, mom and dad, if you're watching this, I just want to say that I'm having a great time. Well, I hope everybody could hear him over the sirens. We're gonna to toss it right back to you, Ophelia and Sean. Thank you, Farika, and happy you, birthday that to that boy who's celebrating with homecoming. You know, Sean, it is my birthday on Monday, so I, too, have a homecoming birthday. Oh, absolutely. My birthday is in December, so it's going to be a bit chillier than it is outside right now today. But I love to see the kids having a good time, especially if it's their birthday. And happy early birthday to you, Ophelia. Thank you so much. Now, the parade just kicked off. If you're just tuning in, welcome, whether you're watching on WUFT, on YouTube, on Facebook, we welcome you. Welcome you home to the University of Florida. We are a top five public university, and it's great to be a Florida Gator today and every day. Yeah, I'm hearing some helicopters above me. It's honestly harder to hear with the helicopters than it was with the police sirens. Yeah, absolutely. You can really hear those helicopters up above us. Get to the chopper. Got Glenn Richards here with us from WUFT. Glenn, how are you doing today? Good job, how are you? I'm very good. It's it's excellent. It's nice to see you. Nice to meet you. I don't think I've met you, you too. before. You want to shake I, hands? <laughs> Hi. Nice good to, to see you. As well. <laughs> so tell us, what are you most excited for this weekend? Oh, the the bands and then the football game. Yeah, absolutely. Will you be attending? No, not this year. Well, I'm sure you'll be able to catch it on TV, but we want to learn a little bit more about WUFT in case any of our viewers at home are not that familiar with it. Absolutely. So as Gainesville's premier public media station, why are events like the Homecoming Parade so important to the community? Well, being a community radio station uh, for North Central Florida and the Nature Coast for radio, we seek to reflect all of the community, um, whether it's news and information programming, cultural or entertainment. So largest part of the funding that we receive is from the community, from members who donate during fund drives and uh, as a sustainer for WUFT. So they're the public in public media. So we like to bring them what they're, uh, what's going on in the community. And what type of local programming does WUFT provide to the North Central Florida community? Well, as you two both know, we've got First at Five on WUFT TV. Uh, that's uh, weekdays at five o'clock. And we've got uh, uh, Artistry in Motion. We've got the uh, um, uh, Greater Good. We've got Fanfares and Fireworks. We've got uh, sounds of the season broadcast that we air uh, for the holidays and on WUFT FM we've got uh, two new programs award-winning programs from WUFT news the point which of course is the newsletter that goes out and there's a podcast version we've been airing a radio version of that uh, weekdays at 950 to close out morning edition 
And uh, the best stories of the week get recapped in The Rewind, which is Sunday mornings at 11.30. And we've got uh, Tell Me About It with Sue Wagner, which focuses on uh, nonprofit organizations and events going on in the community. And we've got another popular podcast uh, from Florida, which is uh, now available as a radio program, and the Night Talks program, student-produced uh, talk show. And that airs on Wednesdays at 11 and 11.30. So uh, a lot of stuff going on uh, that we always look to expand uh, whenever possible. We've got a couple of new things in the works. We've got mayoral debates coming up, of course, big election in Gainesville. And that'll be on WUFT News and WUFT FM Radio. And we've got a new music program that we're working on called WUFT Amplified, which will be premiering in January. That's awesome. That sounds like a lot of fun to me. WUFT Amplified. I, I like the name. And I know we talked about um, covering our diverse community, making sure that we get them what, what they need as far as uh, being a network goes. And we're really important during trying times. So tell us about some of the Hurricane Ian coverage that came from UF students and faculty. Well, a lot of it. Uh, we've got three meteorologists for the Florida Public Radio Emergency Network. And... They were doing reports on uh, radio and on WUFT-FM, uh, Facebook Live and social media as well, uh, keeping people informed. And the Florida Public Radio Emergency Network uh, covers the entire state. So we had special reporting going on elsewhere where the affected areas like WUSF in Tampa and WGCU in Fort Myers doing extended broadcasts for them and WUCF in uh, Orlando. Um, and then after Ian, we had reporters down in the area uh, assisting with reporting. Three students had national uh, stories broadcast on NPR, um, as well as filing stories for WUFT and other uh, stations. So um, a lot of student input. And during the storm, a lot of students that were at home with their families uh, and filing reports from the affected communities. And I know you mentioned some of the special projects that you guys are working on over at WUFT. Where can viewers find that? For WUFT yes. TV? Yep. Or, well, all of it's at WUFT.org, uh, of course. Uh, WUFT TV, uh, uh, Channel 3 on Cox Cable and uh, over the air on Channel 5 uh, in Gainesville, Greater Gainesville, and other uh, cable outlets, I think, in Ocala. And... WUFT FM is 89.1 uh, FM in Gainesville, and uh, the Nature Coast is 90.1, and we've got a classical signal on HD uh, hybrid digital radio, and that's uh, HD2. That's available on 102.7 FM in Greater Gainesville and 88.5 in uh, out of Newberry, so they can hear our classical programming, uh, which includes local programming as well uh, in the afternoon one to four weekday afternoons with uh, Dana Hill and Magnum Opus. But, um, yeah, and then we're on social media at WUFT Media. Awesome. Well, lots of exciting things coming from WFT News. We thank you so much for being here with us today and for all of the programming that you provide to the residents here in North Central Florida. Thanks, and thanks for the great job you guys do. Love uh, your work on First at Five. All right. Thank, thank you thank so you. much. And speaking of viewers, we have viewers tuning in from Orlando, Venezuela, Washington, South Carolina, and Daytona Beach. We're going to send it over to the streets to see what it looks like over there. We're at the homecoming parade with Walt, his wife, and his buddy, and they were telling me about a tradition they have with tailgating. Tell me some more about that. Well, we've all... Uh gotten together over the years meeting each other through tailgating now we got together now we're called the dirty dozen we got six big rvs and we run all over the place all the homecoming games we do road games and everywhere we go we make it fun and what are some of your plans are you staying here the whole weekend what does it look like celebrating homecoming well actually we started yesterday late afternoon and we plan on being here till sunday uh, morning then we'll depart until then we got so many things to do and so many places to go to. You were telling me you've traveled all over the nation for games, events. What was the, the late, what's been the most fun? Well, the, uh, the, those days is before I was married kind of sort of thing. Uh, we don't want to go there. But hey, 
Every, every game with the Gators is always an experience, and you meet all kinds of great people, and always a good time. Uh, Thank you. So year, oh. This year we're going to be going to Jacksonville for Florida, Georgia. We're heading over to Nashville for the Vanderbilt game. Uh, then we're going to Madison for the Florida State, Florida game. So we have a big group and we just have fun. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me. Um, thank you so much for speaking with me. I am hoping that you guys will enjoy the rest of the, the game, the tailgating. Back to you. Thank you, Amy. I hear the band coming, so if you're just joining us, welcome to the 99th UF Homecoming Parade. We are bringing you this live on WUFT-TV, WUFT.org, and Facebook Live. This programming is brought to you by the University of Florida Alumni Association. Joining us is Mary Brandenburg from WUFT-TV. How are you doing today? I'm great. How about you all? Doing great. Excellent. Good. The band's coming. <laughs> What are you most looking forward to this weekend? Just another great weekend of Gator football. Absolutely. Will you be going to the game? Oh, yes. There's no other way to do it. So tell us a little bit about WUFT's education outreach activities scheduled for this fall. Well, as uh, you know, educational outreach at WUFT TV is all about promoting literacy in our community. So this year, on October 27th, we are participating in an International Day of Reading in partnership with the Cade Museum, this, this particular book, Nigel and the Moon. That's awesome. And can you tell us a little bit about what is Read for the Record? Read for the Record is a, a like I said, an international day where everyone reads the same book. And in the Florida public media, uh, stations will all be participating this year. Now we're going to take a pause to listen in on the band as they're rolling up 13th Street. We'll send it over to a live view of the street.
of the Association of Black Alumni, the Association of LGBTQ Alumni, we have the Gator Band Alumni, and the Florida Cicerones, again, all of those put on by the University of Florida College of Journalism and Communications. Now we're gonna send it back over to the street with one of our reporters who's talking to some people in the crowd. She is a UF alum and now lives in New Mexico. How do you feel being back in Gainesville, Florida? I'm super excited to be back in Gainesville. Um, I brought my kids with me who are now 23 and 18 and they're super excited to be here too. Yeah, it's, it's awesome, the 99th annual, so exciting. Um, how has the parade changed since you've gone to school here? Um, when I was a student, actually the parade started at the O'Connell Center and went all the way down University Avenue to Main Street. Um, so I was surprised to find out that it was starting here on 13th so yeah yeah it's super exciting I, I love the energy of everyone and are you going to the game tomorrow I am going to the game tomorrow I'm really excited about the game um, I always tailgated with friends and I'm looking forward to watching the band march to the stadium that was always a tradition for uh, my friends and I to watch so I'm really excited about that yeah I am so excited go Gators thank you so much back to you Ophelia and Sean Thank you, Kennedy. And if you're just Sorry, tuning in, welcome to the 99th annual UF Homecoming Parade broadcasted on WUFT as well as Facebook and YouTube. We'd like to take the moment to thank our sponsor, the University of Florida Alumni Association. Without them, this broadcast simply wouldn't happen. Absolutely. It is hard to stop dancing with all of the music and all of the festivities behind us. It's hard not to feel festive. Absolutely, you can see them doing the It's Great to Be a Florida Gator chant. It truly is great to be a Florida Gator with all of the festivities happening this weekend. We've got Gator Growl tonight at 7 p.m., the homecoming parade happening right now, and of course, the big football game tomorrow at noon against the Missouri Tigers. We see the Chabad uh, Jewish Student Center behind us. Uh, hopefully it's Shabbat Shalom and touchdown Gators tomorrow. Absolutely, and right there on the screen you see Meldon Law. They are the only official injury law firm partner of the University of Florida. They were founded in 1971, keeping all of you Gators safe on the streets and on campus. I feel like it's just a new noise revving up. Even though the drums have gone away, we hear the slow growl of a motorcycle behind us. We see a twirling team behind us, a lot of young kids participating in this parade and they are absolutely excellent. <laughs> Our producer Matt Abramson is rocking out. We've got a uh, young student singing Enter Sandman behind us. If you can hear it, she is absolutely belting this out. I, I, I love to hear it. Metallica, uh, part of the big four in heavy metal. Uh, what do you think, Ophelia? I think the music is great. It just adds to the atmosphere of this weekend. Today is just the first day of this homecoming weekend. So if you like what you see, we've got a lot more coming for you with the Gator Growl tonight. We even had Gator, Gator Gallop this morning, which was a run. It started at 10.45. I, I'm not much of a runner, so you didn't catch me at that, but here I am at the parade this morning. Absolutely miss me with that as well. I am fine sweating in the heat, but I will not be out here gasping for breath. So shout out to everybody who participated in Gator Gallup. Hey, more power to you. It could not be me. Heavy pedal, that's excellent. And you can see the little cars on the screen. They have the American flag waving in the wind. So patriotic, doing circles, showing off those engines. We'd also like to take the time again to thank the University of Florida Alumni Association. Without them, this broadcast would not be possible. So many thanks to them and all that they do for alumni across the world. What are those behind us, dune buggies? What do you, what do you call those? Whatever it is, it's amazing. We've got people wearing fezes out here. I don't think I, I don't remember the last time I've seen a fez in person, but I am I, I'm very happy. Uh, I'm I, here I'm, for I'm it. enjoying it more and more every passing second of the parade. We're going to send it back out to the street. I believe that's Fabriha 
Fariha Abrar. Uh, she's going she's gonna to be on my case tomorrow. Fariha Abrar with a microphone on the street. We'll send it there. of speed bumps. This is the second year where the parade is coming up 13th Street and not on University Avenue. We got little race cars, like wow. Man, uh, like I said, I'm more and more impressed with every passing second in this parade. Everybody seems to be enjoying it and the way they're participating with such energy and such vigor, it makes me proud to be a part of this broadcast. So wherever you're watching from, we hope you're enjoying it. You leave a comment down below. Once again, we're on WUFT-TV, WUFT.org, and Facebook Live. And we want to give a shout out to some of our viewers. We have Cindy from Wellington, Denise from Melbourne, we have Toddy from Venezuela, an international viewer. We have Chris from South Carolina and Trisha from Illinois. And this just goes to show that our alumni network is so big. We, also, we also have my mom. Hi, mom. Uh, Dr. Kim Pierce Humphrey and my friend Denise Mars from Melbourne. And uh, we're going to send it out to the street. That's Fariha with a microphone. She's got two lovely people with her. So what are y'all doing here? All right, I'm here with Logan and Katie. And they are here from Dance Marathon. They're also seniors at UF, right? And this is not your first homecoming parade, is no. it? So what do you guys think of this one? This one is fantastic. It's great to just feel the energy and the really the dater spirit. Yeah, absolutely. I love seeing all the alumni and like the community come out and support. We have a friend on homecoming corps, a friend marching with the band, and Dance Marathon also has a float, so we're just here to cheer everybody on. That's awesome. And you know, the parade was going on, the, the band was going by, we were all still dancing. Dancing never stops, does it? No, it, no, does, it does not. not. No. And are you guys going to be going to the game tomorrow? Yes, ma'am. Yes, definitely. Beat Mizzou. Beat Mizzou, that's Mizzou. right. All right, well, this is back to Ophelia and Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Our a team of three to 18 year olds all putting on this show. They're here today at the parade. I was never a cheerleader, but I'm always so impressed by the stunts that they do and the things that they're able to accomplish. Yeah, I was a middle school basketball grinder, not even a legend. I just got out there, got rebounds, played defense and did my job. But I always enjoyed the cheerleaders and the dance team. It's very hard work, especially in competition. Uh, so those all-star cheer teams, it's no easy task. You know, when they're going on trips to Orlando and places like that, it's a uh, Tough money, not easy money. Oh. Now we have the retirement home for horses rolling up 13th Street. We I've got been some actual horses on that float, it looks like. <laughs> or people with horse masks. That's a, that's a lot of fun. I, I, I've been a... Uh, I've been pushing this about horses recently. I love horses. I love animals. But horses, I have a healthy respect for because I, I don't know how they work. You know, I know I can stick my hand out. A dog can sniff my hand, and we'll know if we're friends by that point. But a horse, I have no clue. So I'm not going to risk it. You will have to tell me the horse is nice before I walk up. But I would like some friends who are horses. I would like many horse friends. Well, there you have some right on the float. <laughs> Those uh, people will be easier to make friends with than actual horses. I just don't want to get kicked. That's what I'm fearing. The Florida Watermelon Association has a float behind us. Ophelia, what's your favorite fruit? I really love watermelon, but I'd have to say raspberries are my favorite. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what my favorite fruit is at this point. I'm a good, big grape guy. A good grape is good. We're taking a look at some performances on the street. Dancing their way up 13th Street during this 99th annual UF Homecoming Parade. Absolutely. That looks like a team of less than 10, but they're handling business. You can hear the crowd cheering. 
People are lined the streets to watch this parade. They were here early, 8 a.m. They were already lining the streets, getting their chairs up for the perfect spot to watch all of the festivities. Absolutely, and I don't blame them because uh, when you look at what we've seen and what's yet to come, we've still got some more bands later. It's absolutely excellent, and you, you got to love to see it. It's homecoming. Come on. We're coming home. It is home. homecoming. You can't help but be happy. We've got the best seat in the house, but you viewers at home, thank you once again for tuning in, whether it's on WUFT, YouTube, Facebook. We'd also like to thank our UF Alumni Association for sponsoring this broadcast. Now, we want to give you a preview of some of the events we have going on after this homecoming parade. We have a Gator Growl happening tonight at 7 p.m. Tickets are still on sale if you want to see Flo Rida right in the in the action i will be there sean will you be there i will not be there but i i, I can sing low from my house everybody knows all the lyrics and that, that's a uh, easy but i might be at the homecoming game we will see and i love to see the tents and the festivities for game day uh, homecoming tailgate will be no different alumni coming from all around the country to take part in the festivities noon kickoff on espnu you can see the beautiful balloons, orange and blue, waving in the wind. Those are my two favorite colors. What about you, Sean? Orange and blue. I mean, I feel like I'll get in trouble if I don't say orange and blue are my putting two favorite colors. Putting you on the colors. spot. You know, so yeah, you're putting me on the spot. I, I feel like I could be prosecuted and pulled off of this set like the Sandman came if I say orange and blue aren't my two favorite colors on a day like this. I do like purple, too. My favorite colors are not garnet and gold. That's all you need to know. That's all that's important. You know. We have the DCP, some fellows in construction hats doing the big gator chomp. A cement truck. I love it. A cement truck just pulling a parade float. I, I feel like I might be overreacting. I don't know if I'm underreacting. This is awesome. Like even the smallest things. And it's a hard hat fall. These guys are ready to go. You can also see some iconic buildings on the side of that float. You have Ben Hill Griffin Stadium and Century Tower, two of the most iconic buildings on the University of Florida's campus. You know, a lot of construction has been going on on campus. So if you attended the University of Florida 10, 20 years ago, campus is looking a lot different now. Absolutely. It feels like when one thing's done, the next thing starts. So when can we enjoy, you know, there being no construction? But it does make the campus better. It is needed. And a lot of areas. I'm glad Union Road is open after construction over the summer. We've got some on Museum Road right now blocking Hume Hall. I don't want to give you a construction report, so I'm going to stop there. You know, this is <laughs> playing construction like it's the weather. Construction play by play. <laughs> <laughs> the dazzling black hatters are coming behind us right now. I love the colors, black and silver. I'm from San Antonio. I'm a Spurs fan, so I love to see it. And they look like they're having fun out there, of course, mixing in the orange and blue. And they're going to be having a reunion this weekend, the Association of Black Alumni that is being put on by the University of Florida College of Journalism and Communications. Lots of organizations coming home this weekend to Gainesville, Florida, where the orange and blue shine bright always. There are a lot of opportunities for karaoke today, and I think we'll spare our viewers for the most part. You know, when you say coming home, there's a song that goes along with that. We've got Jess Johnson back with us. How you feeling now, Jess? Anything feeling different or just better, more energized? How is it? Every bit of what you just said, <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> Friends in the parade, Gator fans in the parade, colleges, local businesses. This is the Gainesville community at its best. How does it feel to be home? Uh, it is home. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, that's, everything about this campus is home, right? Actually, on the way over here, I walked through the Plaza of the Americas, got to see the end of the Gator Gallop. Everything that's happening on this campus like, makes you feel great. Absolutely. And, you know, talking about alumni coming home, tell us about how alumni across the country and even the world can connect with the UF campus through the University of Florida Alumni Association. Yeah, the Alumni Association really is the best way to stay connected, um, to, to get communications about what's happening on campus, to stay in the know 
about the campus, the sports, your colleges, the business units, the student organizations that you cared about or were a part of while you were a student. All that gets funneled through the Alumni Association. So it's a great way to stay connected. It's also a great way to give back. Uh, it's just an entry point where Gator grads can find ways to mentor students, uh, to be involved in the lives of students, the programs that they care about. You know, one that I'd love to highlight is the Match in Florida Opportunity Scholars Program. It's a program that helps students who are the first in their families to come to college at all, and they come to the University of Florida, they get a full ride. That's one of the premier programs that the Alumni Association and our board really support and have been pushing the last few years. That's an amazing program to learn about. It's hard not to cheer along with everything going on behind us. I heard the Gator Chomp. I heard the G-A-T-O-R-S being spelled out. It's very difficult not to cheer along. But we've got some important things to talk about here. What are the perks of a UFAA membership? I know about Beat Tees. Can you, you tell us specifically about Beat Tees and then go into everything else? Yeah, the Beat Tees are a really big deal, right? People will line up in front of Emerson Alumni Hall to get those Beat T-shirts before the home football games. So that's always a big deal. On a home football game day, in front of Emerson Alumni Hall is the Gator Nation tailgate. Like, what an experience that is, right? Tailgates happen all across this 2,000-acre campus. But to have that happen in front of Emerson Alumni Hall, right across from the north side of the stadium, is a really special experience, and it's exclusive for members of the Alumni Association. And from what I understand, that tailgate will be for members of the UF Alumni Association. How can viewers at home become a member? It's super easy. I mean, if you're me, you just Google it, right? University of Florida Alumni Association, but our address is uflalumni.ufl.edu. So, Go to that website or just Google the University of Florida Alumni Association. Find us on LinkedIn, find us on Instagram, whatever your favorite social platform is, it's a great way to connect. And why is being a member so important? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's just you being able to show your Gator pride uh, throughout your life, right? We talk about the Gator Nation and people don't get it until you're walking in some far-flung mountain or airport somewhere in the world and you get that experience of having somebody say, go Gators, right? And then that translates into job interviews, networking connections, um, just involvement in community or civic or philanthropic events. It's those types of things that I've found my friends and the people that I know have benefited the most from being engaged, connected through the University of Florida Alumni Association. Jess, what does it mean to be able to share UF Homecoming, the festivities, and all the fruits of UFAA with your family? Yeah, I mean, having them here is really special. Actually, you remind me of the first time that I brought my son to a home football game. And we were driving down 8th Avenue, right, and there's traffic everywhere. There's tailgates everywhere. We're walking to my fraternity house where we still park before the football games. And he asked this question to me. He's like, are all these people Gators? Like that realization going off in his mind that, not only are we Gators in our family, we wear the orange and blue, we do the chomp right over left, locked at the elbows, but tens of thousands of people will do that in a single location, and it's like, mind blown, son, when it's, there's a half million people who have come through the halls of this institution and are now making a difference in their communities all across this planet. Well, you've raised them right to love Gator Nation. What is the favorite part for your kids of homecoming? Oh, that's a really good question. I mean, look, the football game is exciting, right? There's nothing like watching the Florida Gators run out of that tunnel, the fireworks going off, the smoke, the cheerleaders, the roar of the crowd. Like, that's got to be it, just based on the reaction I see from them. But, yeah, I think they're also enjoying these festivities today and really seeing the Gator Nation turn out in force. Do they have a favorite player? Oh, man, of course they love Anthony Richardson. They love watching him, but, geez, you know, this, this team has a lot of talent all across the board. So uh, be looking for them to cheer for everyone who's wearing the orange and blue tomorrow. Absolutely, and will your kids be attending the University of Florida? You know, I guess we'll have to see. It's a top five university. It's super exclusive, hard to get into, but still one of the premier land-grant institutions. Um, it prioritizes uh, the students who live and grow up in the state of Florida, which is one of the best things about the history of this place. So I hope they're lucky enough to also join the Gator Nation. Uh, this is a really special place. 
Well, thank you so much for joining us and thank you once again to the University of Florida Alumni Association for sponsoring this broadcast. This wouldn't be possible without you and your organization. So thank you so much for this and for being here today. It's our tens of thousands of alums who give every year who have contributed to us being a top five university and really making that rise. So thanks to every Gator out there. Appreciate thank it. So nice much. being here with you. Yeah, thank you for joining us. And we will be taking a look again at the parade on 13th Street. If you're just tuning in now, welcome to the 99th annual University of Florida Homecoming Parade. We've got a lot of fun festivities lined up for you today. All right. And if you're joining us from WUFT TV, WUFT.org or Facebook Live or even YouTube, wherever you're joining us from, we've got people from all over the country and the world. Thank you. Stay with us. Look at those gators, those studious gators. It looks like they're at commencement with a cap and gowns. Got a couple of cars driving up now. I see Smathers Libraries. There's a lot of interesting things there. We're going to go to Amy Gallo on this street. Amy, what do you have for us? So she didn't go to school here at UF, but she's a huge fan of the Gator Nation. So tell me, how long have you been here? How long have you been coming to this parade? I've been here six and a half years, and I've been coming to all the parades every year. It is a Gator tradition, and you just totally have to be here. I love the energy. I love the excitement. It is the only place to be on homecoming weekend. And you told me you brought your parents down for the very first time. So how have they been feeling looking at all of this? They are energized. They had breakfast over at the Powell House this morning, which was amazing. We're going to some tailgates this weekend. They got here at 2 a.m. this morning, and we are still pumped. Go Gators! <laughs> and do you mind me asking, how, how old are they? My, they are 77 and 78. Oh my goodness, <laughs> and they're, they're ready to go. Yes, they are enjoying the day. Yes, and absolutely. Are you, will you be going to the football game? I am, will be later, yes. We will be going to the football game, so go Gators. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, it was a pleasure speaking to you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the parade. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amy. What a great story. Just so many people coming home for this University of Florida homecoming parade. We have the Gainesville High School ROTC marching up the street. They sound like they have some authority back there. <laughs> yeah, these guys are uh, very disciplined, super disciplined. NJROTC is a big part of what we do, not just in Gainesville, but in this country. Hey, Gainesville, uh, they had their big rivalry game with Buhos last night, and it didn't end well for them, but hey, you know what? You win some, you lose some, and they're certainly winning today walking out here during this parade. Again, that's the Gainesville High School NJROTC unit. You're looking at some potential service members right there marching up 13th Street. We'd like to take the time to thank all of those who have served, both past, present, and future. Thank you for your service. The band is coming, another band, more money for me. No money for me, but it's excellent. I love it. I love the bands. I don't know what tune they're playing because I haven't been in this community that long, but I'm sure the Gainesville High School alumni who are here today, who might be UF alumni, know exactly what's going on, and they love it just as much if I do, as I do, if not more. And that's the Gainesville High School band. We're going to let y'all listen to the band, see what great tunes they have for us today. band marching up the street the hurricanes 
And we have some cheerleaders as well with their pom-poms doing the big old gator chomp. Yup, yup, right over left. Another special shout out to the University of Florida Alumni Association who made this broadcast possible. Thank you very much and thank you for contributing to the University of Florida Alumni Association. We've got people everywhere. If I hop off of a plane in Las Vegas, there might be a gator there, just like bodies of water in the state of Florida. And Sean, that's going to be us in just under a year. We're both seniors. This is our last UF homecoming how does it feel I mean it's it's great um, it's a little scary I think it's scary for anybody to reach any kind of milestone so you see those kids out there they might be getting ready to graduate high school and it's new horizons for them I don't know where I'm going but all I know is hey it's great to be a Florida Gator it's been fun to be a Florida Gator we've overcome the pandemic and we've gotten all the way here Absolutely. It's a little bittersweet knowing that this is the last time we'll be students at the UF homecoming celebration, but I'm definitely going to come back, uh, come home when, you know, I've graduated. Absolutely. We got some kids dancing on the street right now. All right, we're going to toss it to Fariha Abrar on the street again. We're going to send it there right now. She's got Y'all, I'm with some there. first timers. Oh I'm here with Alex and Caden, who are also here with Bailey. She is a first timer at the homecoming parade. And we're all just enjoying ourselves out here, aren't we? Definitely. Yes. So, what are you guys looking most forward to in the parade? I honestly just love the high energy. It's just amazing to be out here in beautiful weather, surrounded by everyone is very happy. Yeah, this is really just a great way to get everybody excited. I'm happy to happy to be in, in, experiencing it for the first time. And you guys said this is your first parade, right? So what, what kind of, do you have been to parades before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the 4th of July. <laughs> and it's, is it anything like the homecoming parade at UF? Honestly, the homecoming parade is way better. I, I love the energy that's here. Everyone's just mostly looking for candy at 4th of July, but this is unbeatable. Right. And Alex? Yeah, this is way bigger than any parade I've been a part of, so yeah. I agree. This is also my first UF home I'm going to parade, and I'm really, really excited to see what else they have in store for us. Uh, and Bailey is too, aren't you, Bailey? <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> All right, back to you, Ophelia and Sean. Thank you so much, Fariha. Now, coming up behind us, we have the Extreme Dance Company. A lot of performances happening on the street this morning. Lots of great talent here in Gainesville. Absolutely, and it takes a lot of preparation to do what they do. Extreme Dance Company, I know competition is absolutely difficult to prepare for, and they get up and they do it every day. It's like a sports team. Not like a sports team, it is a sport, so it is a sporting organization, and they've got all ages of people participating in dance and being great at it. Yeah, absolutely. Dance is such a competitive sport and major props to all the dancers out there because not only do you have to have rhythm, athleticism, but you also have to have the stamina to get through all of those songs and bring that energy, similar to the energy that we're seeing here this morning at the parade. How's your dancing, Ophelia? It's hit or miss, but I can bust out a few moves here and there if you get the right song on. I know I will be dancing tonight at Gator Growl, 7 p.m. with Flo Rida, one of my favorite artists. I, I hear that tickets are still on sale, so if you want to catch Flo Rida tonight, you can still purchase your tickets. For students, I believe Gainesville. there are some discounts. Gainesville United Gators, my guys back there. I know these kids. I've seen them around, and I've covered them before as a reporter. These kids kids are absolutely awesome and their coaches are awesome. You sports are super important. And we're going to toss it to the street. Kennedy Mason is down there. She's got two lucky Kennedy. contestants for her game show. It's not a game show, but it's okay. Yeah, so I am here with Jamie, Matthew, and Brennan. They're all undergrad students currently at the University of Florida, all engineering majors. So Jamie tells me he was in the parade last year. How was that experience? What did you do? Uh, it was so much fun. I was here part of the Solar Gators solar car design team last year and in 2019. It was super fun getting to ride around on the car and show off what we had built to everyone. You know, to show off our school spirit and our excitement for engineering and what we could make, you know? Yeah, that's amazing. And then Matthew and Brendan here, this is their first time at the parade. So how is it? The first time ever. It's honestly a lot of fun. The school spirit here is amazing. Uh, I'm surprised it's taken me so long to actually attend the parade, uh, being my fifth year in undergrad. So I wish I did it a lot sooner. It's a lot of fun. 
Uh, I, I mean, uh, what he said uh, uh, is exactly. Uh, I enjoy seeing everyone in the community. Uh, I enjoy seeing everyone show off their pride for what they do and everything. It's just really fun and really energizing. Energizing for sure. And, um, you know, the parade is well on its way. So what has been your favorite part of the parade so far? Well, though I'm not with them today, seeing the solar car team with the car they finished over the last year and my friend who's still on the team, that was my favorite part. Also got to shout out Solar Team again with uh, Taylor Girk, our friend. Um, but it was also really cool to see uh, uh, the president, Fox, out here uh, in his car. And just everyone, all the different clubs, swimming and diving was also really cool. Yeah, and what about you, Brennan? Uh, I love the, as well, the Solar Gators. I also have a uh, heart for the uh, marching band as well. A lot of my friends are in there. A shout out to everyone, and they, did, they performed very well today. Yeah, the marching band is amazing. Yay! Go Gators! Woo! Such great energy coming from the street. Thank you so much, Kennedy, and to all the little football players and cheerleaders marching up 13th Street. Ballers. I love those guys. I've met them before, a lot of them. Legend. Okay, Danny Werfel, he's got a statue here, a Heisman winner, 1996 national champion, University of Florida, great. And what makes that national championship even better is that the Gators trounced the Florida State Seminoles. It wasn't even close. But, hey, Steve Spurrier, the head ball coach, and Danny Werfel, a good head coach and quarterback combo. Spurrier, a quarterback great at UF himself. Danny Werfel, the bald legend. I love to see him on commercials here. I love to see him on billboards. And I love to see that ring, national champion. Absolutely, such great legends here at the University of Florida. You also have Tim Tebow, the statue right outside of Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. So excited to see so many Gator greats, both past, present, and future. Yep, and we're going to take you to that video now of Danny Werfel. Hey, everybody. This is 1996 Heisman Trophy winner, Danny Werfel. Let the Gator growl. Let the Gator growl. <laughs> we, we've talked about Gator growl. Ophelia, I know you're going. What excites you the most about Gator growl? I think just the fact that it's one of the largest student-run pep rallies in the nation. Just another reason to be a proud Florida Gator. But I'm also looking forward to singing and dancing alongside Flo Rida. What a great artist to wrap up my senior year here at the University of Florida. Absolutely. We've got the Girl Scouts behind us. I would like free Samoas. I'm going to use the chance to say that right now. I would like free Samoas. I'll pay you back down the line. I might not. We'll just keep it honest there. But the Girl Scouts, were you a Girl Scout when you were younger? I was not, but I hear the cookies are incredible. Didn't they just come out with a new flavor? Hey, I haven't heard about the new flavor, but I'd like some free boxes of that too. You heard it here first, Sean Humphrey. I'm not saying say your address on live TV, but you know where to send them. Sean Humphrey, free Girl Scout cookies. 
We also have the blood drive coming up 13th Street. Donating blood is such an important thing in our community, especially with Hurricane Ian that just passed through and, you know, really destroyed a lot of lives in Southwest Florida. And here at the University of Florida, we've been doing many things to help those communities in need. We have partnered with the Red Cross Association to help those who have been affected. Um, also, the UF Veterinary Emergency Treatment Service team is down down in Fort Myers to set up a field hospital at the Lee County Domestic Animal Services will, where they'll support animals that were impacted by the storm. And our hearts and prayers go out to all of those families that were impacted by the storm just last week. Absolutely. And a shout out to all of the first responders who waded through those waters to pull people out of the wreckage. Absolutely. And UF Health actually brought in 18 people who were impacted by the storm to treat them at UF Health Shands. So it just goes to show, you know, we are really trying to make this community better and help out where we can. Even though our main campus is not in southwest Florida, we want to do our best to help out those students who were impacted, those families, and, and everything in between. And we're going to now go to the street to talk with some viewers and people that came here today for the homecoming. Parade. Hey y'all, I'm here with some Gator Gallopers. They actually just ran before the parade started. I'm here with Alyssa, Allie, Megan, and you guys are all uh, different years and you also have been in the parade and a few of you have not, right? Uh, yes. Yes, this is our first time seeing the parade. Uh, yeah, both my parents were alums, so I've been at the parades doing the Gator Gallop for as long as I can remember. That's awesome! So what do you remember when you were a kid when you were doing the Gator Gallop? Uh, it was just so much fun. I always would dress up and just, you know, run, meet my parents at the finish line. And it's so fun, like, getting to see everyone and getting cheered on and giving everyone high fives along the way. And I'm assuming that when you were a kid, they all did the same thing to you, so you get to do the same to other kids. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. And how are you guys feeling? It's your first parade that you're running in and that you're watching, correct? Yeah, it's really exciting. I feel really alive now. I'm really hyped up, excited for homecoming. I really feel the Gator spirit. I'm excited for the game. It's nice to see all the families here and alumni, so it's really heartwarming. That's right. The Gator spirit is unbeatable, and you can't miss it out here at the homecoming parade. Ophelia and Shaw, I'll toss it back to you. Thank you, Fariha. We've got the Buholz Golden Regiment behind us. They're coming up right now. You hear them getting louder and louder as they get closer to our campus here. Hey, Buholz, big win over Gainesville yeah, last night. It wasn't that. close. Buholz is a great team, undefeated on the season, and that band plays a lot, so I'm surprised they've got the energy today to be able to come out here after using up all their breath at that football game. Absolutely, and maybe some of these students that you're seeing right now on the streets are going to be students at the University of Florida here soon. But we'd also like to thank our UF alumni who have donated to the Alumni Association. And because of that organization, we're able to have this broadcast today. So thank you once again to our sponsor, the UF Alumni Association. Now we're going to take a pause and let you listen in on the band. some air trumpet maybe I'll be as good as the Buholz band someday if I keep practicing and trying my best yeah such great talent I'm really looking forward to also seeing the Gator band tomorrow at the University of Florida football game they were here earlier in the parade so if you're just tuning in now welcome to the 99th annual University of Florida homecoming parade we've got a great parade that's been rolling up 13th Street it's still going so you're not too late thank you for tuning in whether it's WUFT YouTube Facebook we want to know where you're tuning in from. We have people from Washington, yep. Venezuela, Orlando, South Carolina, everywhere here today. So we appreciate you tuning in.
Yep, there's Gator greats all over the place. We've got a Gator great joining us soon. Kent Fox will be joining us. So if you're planning on tuning away, don't do it. Just keep your hand off of the dial. Keep your hand off of the dial. Keep your hand off the remote. Keep your hand away from the mouse. Don't close out the tab on your phone. Whatever you need to do to stay with us, stay with us, and we'll stay with you as this parade keeps chugging along 13th Street. There's plenty to go and plenty of great things. There's Dance Marathon behind us. If I tried to do that, I would pass out. See them doing the big gator chomp. Go, gators! It's hard. It's hard not to sing along. When you hear that tune, it just awakens something within you. It's the, like you said, the gator spirit. And there's nothing better than hearing 90,000 attendees doing the same chomp in the swamp. That will be happening tomorrow at noon when the football game kicks off. That will be streamed on ESPNU. So a lot of eyes will be on the Gators and the Missouri Tigers. Independent Dance Studio is behind us. More dancers, more things I cannot do in this body, but it's all good. We're going to toss it to the streets. Amy Gallo is with us. Can we have you stand over here? Oh, here, face the camera. Perfect. All right, so we're live right now with these adorable kids. So they are they're veterans of the parade. They say they've been here a lot. So can you guys tell me your names real quick? Lucas. Malin. Oh, yeah. Henry. Okay, and so what has been your favorite part of the parade? The army. The what? The army. The army? What about you? She's not sure. The floats. Kind of like the army and everyone, and like the floats. The reason why I like the army is because my dad was in the army, the Air Force. That is so cool. Is that what you want to do when you grow up? Mm, maybe. I don't know. Super exciting. She's showing off something here. She's really excited about the artwork over here. Uh, but that's about it right now. Thank you so much. We'll go back to you. They'll be coming to the University of Florida. Absolutely. As long as they're Gators and not Seminoles. If they're Seminoles, we'll support them, but it's just not the same. You know, exactly. I can't wear those colors. We have some more dancers on the street showing off their moves. Oh, backwards stepping. Like I said, I cannot do any of this, so more props to them. It doesn't matter if you're 5 or 55. If you can dance like that, just know you've got a leg up on me. Looks like they're holding their tap shoes. Sean, how's your tapping? <laughs> how's my, I can tap on this desk. <laughs> with my fingers, I can tap on this desk. That's about as far as I can go with that. You know? what, what about you? Are you a, a, an undercover tap dancer? Absolutely not. That is not my <laughs> hidden talent, but major <laughs> props to all of the dancers here on the street. We have some more coming up. Some cheerleaders as well. We've got a royal dynamic dance team behind us wearing pink in October. Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And joining us now is the president of the University of Florida, President Kent Fox. Thank you so much for being here today. You're welcome, Ophelia. Good to see you. Hi, Sean. Hi. Nice to meet you. So what is your favorite part of homecoming weekend? I mean, there's so many things to look forward to, but if you had to choose just one thing, I know it's a hard question, putting you on the no, spot, no, but what's your favorite no. thing? Uh, I, I, I'm a big sucker for parades, so I love parades. Uh, Gator growls this amazing tradition. Tomorrow we got a football game. All three, all three. Yeah. Absolutely, and you and Linda were grand marshals in this year's parade. What was that like, and what does that experience mean for you? Well, it's a wonderful kind of bookmark or bookends for us because seven years ago, which was our year, first year, uh, we were grand marshals, and this is our last year, so we just enjoy it. And the crowds are amazing. The parade route is different than seven years ago, but the, the crowds are beautiful and one. I love all the young kids doing the gator chomp. Absolutely, <laughs> right over left, you can't mess it up. Yeah. 
Can you tell me about your temporary tattoo? I love it. Oh, you love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I forgot it was there. <laughs> What are some of your personal highlights from being president of the University of Florida? There are just so many fun things that you remember. Uh, things like uh, shooting the t-shirt cannon at a, at a basketball game. Just amazing. Um, the commencement of seeing students graduate. The convocation when students arrive on campus. And then just the accomplishments of the university from all the almost $5 billion raised in fundraising, a billion dollars in research applications doubling. There's just so many wonderful things that, that we've just loved and embraced and enjoyed. Absolutely. Well, we're going to take a quick break from this interview to listen in on the band, but we'll be right back with you. So stay tuned. Yeah, it's going to get loud here. and even the ones they already have, more valuable. People nationally recognize, wow, you went to the University of Florida, you're there with the very best universities in the world. Uh, but that's just the beginning. I'm just so excited about the next 10 years, a new president that will soon be announced, and just watching what our students accomplish, our faculty and staff accomplish. It, it, uh, the the future is just going to be brighter, and more achievements will occur in the next decade than we've ever seen in the past. And from what I understand, word on the street, a new campus in West Palm Beach, is that correct? Yes, yes, exactly. We have a number of initiatives in Southeast Florida. The first is the Scripps Research Institute, which is one of the world's very best biomedical research institutes. Their campus in down in Palm Beach County in Jupiter is now part of the University of Florida. It's called the University of Florida Scripps Research Institute. About 400 employees and faculty and staff just conducting amazing research. Then further south, we're creating a new campus in West Palm Beach around financial services, FinTech, uh, at the graduate level. That's really exciting. It'll be more, more announcements over the next few years. Yeah. That's so exciting. Can you tell us a little bit about what you'll be doing going forward? I know this is your last year, but I've heard you are going to be joining the faculty as a teacher. Like, that's really honorable to me, and I want to hear more about it. Yeah, I am. I, I turned 68 in just a few weeks, uh, so I, I know I'm not going to be uh, on the faculty for a long time, but for the next three, four, five years, I want to go back to what I did many years ago, back in the 80s, and that's teach computer engineering, computer hardware. Now, I've got to work so hard over the next year to, to, to learn because computers have changed a little bit since 1985. So uh, it's going to be exciting. I look forward to teaching uh, these required courses in electrical and computer engineering for sophomores, juniors, freshmen. Uh, I'll work hard, but it'll be a lot of fun. Now, we both are seniors, and <laughs> we understand that you've attended many UF commencements. Yeah. First of all, will you be at ours? Uh, it depends when you're graduating. I'll be at the December one. Got it. But, but I won't be at the May. Our, our new president will be there. Um, I have presided over 117 at commencements. Wow. Can you imagine 117? Wow. It's, it's been just a lot of fun. Yep. That's amazing. And how much pride do you feel each time you see new students going off into the real world oh. after getting their education at a top five public university? That's why we're all here. That's why the faculty are here, That those myself, the staff, uh, all of us are here. It's because of the students. We do a lot more 
but it's really about the students. So we, 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 we feel like we're, we're parents of all those that, that arrive and then graduate. And so we take some ownership of their great, amazing success. It's been great to see you around campus and, and see you actually be accessible. You know, it, it, it's excellent. And I, I really appreciate it myself. I know a lot of the student body appreciate it as well. Could we possibly see you as Mr. Tubit soon? Because I'd love to see you. <laughs> I, uh, I was my first year, and uh, that's a once-in-a-lifetime honor. Uh, so I, it, but that was a lot of fun. Uh, my friends in Long Island said, why are you on my TV? What are you doing? And I was Mr. Tubits. <laughs> well, thank you again for thank me personally for making yourself, again, so accessible, for even doing this interview here with us today. I know we are all going to miss you so much as president of the university, but we're very happy to hear that you'll still be on campus as faculty, but still here nonetheless. Yes. So thank Thanks, you so Ophelia. much. Thanks, Thanks, Sean. Yeah. Go Gators. Go Gators, Go Gators <laughs> of course. President Professor Emeritus Fox. <laughs> He's got a lot of titles. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. And we're going to take it back to the street for a live look at this parade that's rolling up 13th Street. We hear some sirens in the background. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you. They're waving some flags, international flags. That just goes to show how diverse our University of Florida community is. We've got people tuning in from all across the nation, all across the world, chomping orange and blue all the way. And those are uh, Latin American countries. So uh, we've seen uh, that we had a viewer from Venezuela. I see Chile, I see Puerto Rico, I see uh, Peru even. Yeah. Wow, a lot of countries represented right there at the University of Florida. Absolutely, on our and the Hispanic community is such an important part of Gainesville, such an important part of the campus, so we're happy to see that represented here today. And just wanted to say thank you once again to our sponsor for today's broadcast, the University of Florida Alumni Association. Thank you for everything you do and for making this parade broadcast possible. Absolutely. Thank you for contributing to the University of Florida Alumni Association if you have done so. And if you haven't done so, I encourage you to do so. There's still time. Yeah. No expiration date. <laughs> still plenty of time. It's not a rush. I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, University of Florida football and how far and where it's come from. We know the parade route used to be on University Avenue. Um, used to be on University Avenue. The team used to play on Fleming Field where we see Gator Walk now. And we're going to toss it out to the street. That's Fariha again. More Fariha, more money. I like it. Y'all, I'm here with the legendary Gator Mike, who is from the class of 88 to 92. Yes. And this is not your first parade, is it? No. What I love about the parade, all the families that come out here, what I, what I need everybody to do, his name is Kevin Smith. He's 92 years old. He's out here right now. He had a heart attack at Shands a week ago. He's here for this parade. So everybody do me a favor and pray for him, please. That sounds really, really, really tough. So I'm, we're definitely going to be praying for him. And if, do you know if he's at the parade right now? He's at the parade. Is he involved in the parade? No. He's, no. Sitting, he's sitting down by Alumni Hall. Awesome. Well, we hope he has a speedy recovery. And Gator Mike, you said this is not your first parade. Is there anything different about the parades from when you were in college versus now? Yes, I'm just glad that COVID is not here no more and all of us can go back to where way we're supposed to because that's what it's all about being a Gator. All right. Well, thank you, Gator Mike. Back to you, Ophelia and Sean. during the COVID-19 pandemic. And the only other time that we did not have homecoming celebration was during World War II in 1944. So the fact that we did not have homecoming festivities in 2020 was something that was really missed. And I, for one, am very excited that we are back to normal. Absolutely, because I didn't get to go to the first couple of homecoming. I didn't get to go my freshman year, and I, of course, didn't go sophomore year because of the COVID cancellation. So now this parade being here, last year and being in this position this year is amazing it's been great so far and we've still got a lot to go it's not over yet behind us we've got the pace center for girls holding up sides we've got some more dancers 
and shortly we'll have East Side NJROTC. Once again, some more discipline. Man, they've had to walk so far with those rifles on their shoulders. Absolutely. Standing up straight. Very impressive what they do. All of the ROTC units in Gainesville, we thank them for what they do and for what they will continue to do in the future. Yeah, absolutely. So, Ophelia, what are some of your favorite game day traditions? Game day traditions, well, obviously getting up on Saturday mornings, knowing that I'm going to be in a packed stadium with all of my Gator fans, you know, just representing that blue and orange and also going tailgating for a little bit, you know, getting the food, the drinks, everything in between. It's just such a great tradition. What's your go-to tailgate food? Probably anything with buffalo. Buffalo chicken wings, buffalo chicken dip, oh, anything, you name it, and I'm there. What about That's you? big time. I love chicken wings, of course. I will eat a burger from anywhere. As long as it's not undercooked, give me the burger. I, I will gladly take a burger, so that is my one requirement. Absolutely. Not undercooked. You can overcook it. I'll still put ketchup and mayo and mustard on it, and I'll have a good time. And then I'll know the Gators are going to play later. Absolutely, and I'm sure there's going to be some food at the homecoming Gator Nation tailgate. That's going to be happening at 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. in front of Emerson Hall for Alumni Association members. So if you're in town, you want, make sure you want to attend that. We also have Gator Growl tonight, 7 p.m. Flo Rideout will be there as well. Yeah, well, I, I can't wait to see video of the whole crowd singing along to Low because I know that it's going to be thousands of people all lifted up in unison, one voice singing, apple bottom jeans, boots with the fur, you know, like it, it, it what, what could be better than this? Definitely, that is one of my favorite songs. And joining us now on set, we have Randy Wright. He is from WUFT. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you today? Uh, aren't we having a good time? Oh, yes. Amazing. Most There's definitely. nothing better. I just have to tell you uh, that we've been watching some of the feedback that's been coming in. You guys are killing it. Oh, cool. You that guys sounds are good doing to me. great. The world of Gator Nation loves you. And when I mean world, I mean literally. We have people writing in with comments from almost every continent. All right, so the scientists in Antarctica aren't with us, but you get, get them the, on the line. You Close get the enough. idea. Close enough. <laughs> get them on the line. Well, I tell you, I'm really proud to be able to represent Dean Hub Brown and everybody at your college of journalism and communications and to just tell you that you're doing an awesome job. Thank, thank you, you so much. We're happy to be here, and thank you to everyone tuning in. I love Hub Brown, too. That's, that's my guy right there. Our Dean, exactly. yes. Exactly. So, one of the things I'd like to do is I'd like for you all to be able to tell the Gator Nation a little bit about your track that brought you to Gainesville, brought you to the University of Florida, and I'll tell you what, the Eastside Band's coming up here in just a minute, so we'll listen to them when they come up here. But let's start with you, Sean. Oh, yeah. Tell everybody where you're from, what your major is, and what brought you to Gainesville? Well, I'm from Melbourne, Florida. I lived there the past 12 years, but I was born in San Antonio, Texas. I'm a Spurs diehard. And uh, <laughs> Gainesville, what brought me to UF is the sports, the sports culture. So when you see this homecoming celebration, you got to love it because this is why I'm here. Exactly. So now let's talk a little bit in just a moment about you. But first, the East Side Marching Band. Sounds good. Let's listen in. So, Sean, Ophelia, the East Side Marching Band, they have this cheer that that I've been around Gainesville now for about 13 years, and one of our daughters is in the Buholtz High School Marching Band, and when the East Side Band 
gets it going, and they have a cheer that I was waiting for and hoping they would get into, it's a lot of fun. They're always awesome, and they're especially good in parades and at football games and stuff like this. All right, so Melbourne. Yes, sir. All right, so you're from Melbourne. Ophelia, tell us your story about how you became a Gator. Right, so I was born in Boston, lived in California for some nine years, and then actually moved to Melbourne, Florida. So Sean and I have known each other since high school. So it's really a full circle moment to be here as seniors at the University of Florida doing this broadcast. But, you know, I chose to come here because of the journalism program. The experiences that it's given me have been life changing. So many opportunities for growth. And I know that when I graduate in the spring, I'm going to be so prepared prepared to take on the real world as a journalist. So it's just been great. So when you were a freshman yes. that fall, did you ever imagine that you would be hosting the homecoming parade streamed worldwide? Never, never in a million years, but it is the opportunity of a lifetime. I was a reporter last year, and so being an anchor this year is just so amazing. Again, it's such a great experience. Um, and to be able to do it with Sean as well has been amazing. So, so Sean, I want to ask you, so favorite places on campus when you leave when you're an alum and you start thinking about coming back for homecoming what are those places you're going to want to go to and see on campus and bring back those good memories <laughs> the swamp <laughs> hey the, when the swamp when it's empty is the most peaceful place on campus and then you flip that on its head and it's the complete opposite on saturdays as we see krishna house passing behind us they've been serving lunch on campus since 1971 it's uh, but the swamp is special. It's absolutely amazing, no matter where you sit. And I, I was waiting to walk into that cathedral of football and of sports uh, before I became a Gator. And when I went to the Summer Media Institute with Ophelia in 2018, walking in that place, seeing the expanse of seats, and knowing that that place is every bit as massive as it looks on TV, it was humbling. You feel like an ant in there, but the, the loudness is amazing on game days. And I could take a nap there when it's cool enough. So was Summer Media Institute, and this is a program that our college does for, for high school students interested in journalism and communications, what kind of experience was that? Is that what really sold you on coming to UF? Absolutely. It, it was amazing because I knew I wanted the sports culture. That was the biggest thing for me. But just the relationships that I was able to foster there, the people I met, the experience I had, we all got along great. There was no bad blood. Uh, no drama. We all had a great time meeting some of the faculty here, like Ryan Vasquez. We uh, now have a relationship with him as students who work on First at Five, and he works on First at Five. So just getting to know some of the faculty, uh, the RAs who were uh, then students, now alumni, just like the people watching at home, those people made it special. So SMI was, it, it was a great experience, and it helped to push me forward when, you know, all the kids around us were just hungry and wanting to do better and wanting to do more. Absolutely. So, Ophelia, one of the things you mentioned was that you'd been a reporter recently mm -hmm. in our media properties and TV and radio stations. So that immersion experience that our college offers, do you feel like it's truly prepared you for industry and that you're ready to go? 100% and just this past weekend I was actually down in southwest Florida covering some of the stories from the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. You know an experience that I never thought I would be able to get as a college student but because of the University of Florida and the College of Journalism and Communication you know they trusted me and a group of students to go down there and tell the stories that really matter and honestly I learned more in those 12 hours than ever before. It was just such a great experience and again to be able to do that and know graduating that I have that experience in my belt is just something that you really can't take for granted. Well, and I have to give you some feedback. You probably haven't heard this, but in talking with the leadership of WGCU, which is the public television, public radio station uh, that you were supporting in Fort Myers, their feedback was Ophelia and the students that came down from your college killed it. They were awesome. They made a tremendous difference. Our staff has been stressed out, as you can imagine, to provide that hurricane coverage, and your students did an outstanding job. So congratulations to you guys, and job well done. Thank you so much, Randy, and thank you for all of your support with putting this broadcast on and for everything you do at WUFT. 
It's all good. You guys make it worthwhile, and you're doing a fantastic job today. Thank We're very you. proud of you. Hey, they're playing Flo Rida behind us. Uh, <laughs> students and uh, alumni will be able to hear him tonight at Gator Growl. Just a little preview of what's going to be happening tonight at 7 p.m. You can still grab your tickets. They're still available for purchase online, so make sure you don't miss out on Gator Growl. Again, we want to thank our sponsor, the University of Florida Alumni Association. Without their support, this broadcast would not be possible. And if you're just joining us, welcome to the University of Florida's 99th Homecoming Parade on WUFT-TV, WUFT.org, and Facebook Live. Yes, it's brought to you by the UF Alumni Association. So thank you to the alumni who have contributed. And thank you for watching from wherever you may be watching from. And thank you for the kind words. I haven't read the comments yet, but I will be reading the comments. So uh, any FSU fans joining in, if you want to say something mean to me, I can take it. I, I have a lot of fun with it. And it looks like we've got Kennedy Mason on the street again. We're going to toss it back to her. Yeah, I'm here. The parade continues. It's looking awesome. And I'm here with these two cuties. What are your guys' names? My name is Gianna. And my name's Ellie. Yeah, awesome. And Gianna tells me that she has some friends who are in this parade. Who is in this parade that you know? My friend, Moxie. Moxie, that's so awesome. And I love your guys' dresses. You guys like twinning a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. And do you guys hope to be future Florida Gators? Yes. Woohoo! Go Gators! Back to you guys. Thank you, Kennedy. Future Florida Gators in the making for sure. They already got the orange and blue, so they're halfway there. Yeah, if I have anything to say about it, they'll be future Florida Gators for sure. <laughs> We got some little kids on this float with a big University of Florida Gators helmet. Just a preview for the football game kickoff 12 p.m. tomorrow against the Missouri Tigers. I hope it's a W. I need a W. It's like my stomach's rumbling and I desperately need food. That's a win tomorrow against Missouri, especially after the tough games we've had against the Tigers over the last few years. Last year's game was not good. But it's a new day, it's a new year, but the same homecoming parade. I love to see it. How you feeling now, Ophelia? Are you a little bit looser, ready to go, happy? Absolutely. This was the perfect way to start off homecoming weekend. Nothing better than seeing both students and staff, as well as alumni and Gainesville natives, all lining the streets just to celebrate what it means to be a Gator. Absolutely. I enjoyed President Fox's interview, uh, being able to talk with him for that amount of time, because I've only seen him in passing. So yes. uh, being able to just give him a quick wave, that goes a long way, too. Uh, shout out to everybody watching from wherever you may be watching from, whatever country, whatever state you may be watching from, and whatever university you may support. Hey, you're watching us. Thank you. Got some more dancers on the street. We're going to toss to Amy Gallo, who's there with some viewers. Amy, what do you have for us? I'm Hangar. And they were telling me it's the first time they've ever been to an event like this. This is the first time you've been to a parade, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your first time. And you're from South Korea, so this is this is very interesting. You're foreign exchange students. What do you what are you guys thinking about this? Um, it's really excited because we didn't experience in Korea like this big parade. Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting and cool. And I like the band. Yeah, you were telling me that's your favorite part. That's my favorite part too. What's your favorite part of the parade? Me too. Um, high school bands are really cool and dancing and cheerleading. Yeah, it's so good. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me. I really appreciate it. Back to you guys. Thank you, Amy. And as you can see, we have a lot of international students here at the University of Florida. We're so lucky to have such a diverse student population as well as alumni networks. So wherever you're tuning in from to today, this morning, we want to know, leave a comment down below. Absolutely. Leave a comment. Tell us how you feel, even if you don't feel too good. If you've got a bad feeling in your stomach hearing me talk, I want to hear about it. You know? <laughs> And if you're just tuning in now, this is the 99th annual University of Florida Homecoming Parade. We are nearing the end, but there's still plenty of floats for you to see, plenty of spirit to go around and to share. 
I'm seeing a lot of Greek life, Ophelia. Ophelia, are you a member of any sororities? I am not, but I have a lot of friends that are, and they say it's been such a great experience just to be able to connect with those people on such a, a high level, you know, being in a sorority for four years, getting to know those people. I can tell why a lot of people would want to join. What it's, about you? I'm not a member of any fraternity, but I know it's a big part of campus life. I've been to a few fraternity houses, too. It's been fun tailgating before games, just getting to know some new people, and, you know, just having that pre-game day spirit. Absolutely, and I think it's a great way as well to be able to stay in touch with your fellow sorority sisters or fraternity brothers once you graduate college. It's a great way to come back during homecoming weekend or any weekend just to, you know, remember what you had here at the University of Florida and yep. what you still have because I don't know about you, but I'm still going to keep in touch with a lot of my friends, my roommates, my classmates after school. Sean, we'll keep in touch after we graduate, I promise. Absolutely. I mean, we've come from the same place and it's been a full circle experience to get us here. Oh, man, this, is, this has been awesome. We've got UF Surf Club coming up soon. I've seen a lot of uh, information about their tailgates and parties over the years, so it's a big time part of this campus. Even if you're not in Greek life, you can do some of the same things with the uh, UF Surf Club. It's really interesting. And even though Gainesville is not on a coast, I'm sure they're able to find the ocean one way or another, east or west coast find those waves to surf. But for right now, they're skateboarding up 13th Street, showing their moves. Well, you can't hop on Lake Alice. <laughs> yeah, that, that might be a little tough. It would be ill-advised to hop on Lake Alice with a surfboard. Uh, gators can be everywhere, not just Florida gators, but American alligators. So, yes. you, if, so if, if you've got your shower filled with water, don't be surprised if there's a gator in there. We've got Fariha Abrar on the street once again. She's got some viewers with her. She's doing a gator shot right over left, arms locked at the elbows at the surf club members. You we'll send it to her, Fariha. Very epic. <laughs> all right, I am here with Brooke, Chloe, and Daniela, who are all not seen. One is a senior, two are law students. And Daniela, you said this is your second parade, right? Yeah. So what is the difference between the first parade you went to and this one? Definitely the weather. The first one was a lot colder, so you know we've been trying to stay in the shade, but the energy is still the same. Everyone's having fun, so definitely a beautiful day to be doing this parade. I 100% agree. And what about you guys? This is your first time. How are you guys enjoying it? I'm having a lot of fun. It's really cool to see you know everybody come together and for the school spirit. You know it shows how even everybody comes together in Gainesville, not even just for UF, but like all the other communities around it. So Absolutely. Right. And what about you, Chloe? Uh, same, yeah, same. It's it's really nice. I mean, everybody seems so enthusiastic, and it's great to see like all the talent too, all the dancers and everything, and the marching bands. It's it's great. It's so much fun. Do you guys have a favorite float yet so far? Hmm, I like the little cars that were going around. I don't know what club or what oh, that I was from. Oh, like the shrine. I think it was. I think it was that. Yeah, I was a personal fan of Albert and Bird on screen, but <laughs> yeah, that, that was really cool. Did you guys? solar car that went around was pretty Yeah, the solar car. Did you guys see Kent Fox also? Yeah. Yes. yes. Right at the beginning, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. I'm going to toss it back to you and Ophelia and Sean. Thank you for rehab. So many great moments here this morning at the 99th Annual University of Florida Homecoming Parade. All right, we've got uh, OTB Kids coming up. I just saw Theta Kai. I got chicken and waffles there last year, and it was delicious. That's <laughs> I had to the give them a bouncing. quick shout-out. Somebody is partying, and it looks like it is O2B Kids. <laughs> Everybody's partying, really. But O2B Kids is bringing the party school bus, which is very interesting. Sean, Wait. do you like to move it? I, I do like to move it, but it depends on which direction. You know, we, we want to do the right things. Some Greek life Greek is life. such an important part of the University of Florida community. So many different fraternities and sororities. You got Sorority Row right near where this parade is taking place and Fraternity Row on the other side of the stadium. Just really impressive stuff. Absolutely. Speaking of the stadium, the game's at 12 tomorrow, a nooner. So the sun's going to be beating down on people. And it's also beating down right now on our reporter on the street, Amy Gallo. And we'll send it to her.
We'll check in with Amy in just a moment, but we have more floats rolling up 13th Street, playing some great music. All right, and now, now we're going to toss it to Amy Gallo. What are you guys' names? Samara and Kristen. I'm here with Samara and Kristen, and they were just in the parade. Can you guys tell me how that was? It was so much fun. Everyone was super excited, cheering us on. It was a lot of fun. It was a great experience and a great way to spend time with the Miracle family. It's a part of DM. So you guys are with Dance Marathon, so I obviously want to ask you guys about some of the things you're doing this year. What can we look forward to? Um, so throughout the year, we have a bunch of big fundraising pushes. So October 25th and 26th, we have what we call Transform Today, where it's our biggest fundraising push of the fall. And then our big 26.2 hour event is April 1st in the spring. Thank you so much for speaking with me. I really appreciate it. Have fun, you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Back to you guys. How you feeling, Ophelia? We're almost to the end of the parade. How's it been so far? I know we plan on coming back, but what has this experience been like for you sitting here at this desk? It's been electric. So much energy, so much spirit. You hear the Hispanic music playing behind us. Such great energy. And I'm definitely going to want to come back once I graduate to attend the UF Homecoming festivities. What about you, Sean? Absolutely. And I'm going to find a seat under some shade because yes. I know it might be hotter next year. Do I hear Kirk Franklin? I may or may not hear Kirk Franklin. I'm not sure. But it's OK. It's one of my favorite songs. <laughs> I've loved all the music today from the bands to the speakers. Amplification, turn it all the way up and don't blow the speakers because, you know, you don't want to have to pay for all of that. Look, there's in our uh, artistic swimming team back there. Artistic swimming. Yes, Sounds synchronized like synchronized swimming, swimming for me. Yep. Which, Sean, if you didn't know, I was a synchronized swimmer back in the day. Yep, I mean, based on off-camera conversations, <laughs> I did know this. However, I will not be participating in synchronized swimming. Add that to the list of things that I cannot do that other people, other talented small people, are doing excellently well. Absolutely. It's such an impressive sport. You know, you have to mix all of the athleticism, the flexibility, the endurance. A lot of these girls are holding their breath underwater for an extended period of time, lifting each other up out of the water. And you also see their glittery costumes, waterproof makeup. It's a whole production. And it's just really impressive. I do miss my synchronized swimming days, but definitely not for me anymore. No, what are you doing now? Water polo. That's Water the polo. sport that I'm doing. Yep. That, that's, that seems different. like just as tough of a sport to me. Here we have Young Life Gators rolling up 13th Street. A lot of great organizations that students can get involved with on campus when they're students and also keep in touch with when they graduate through the University of Florida Alumni Association. I thought that was a real weight back there for a second. That would have been worried. impressive. I'm like, what? Well, you've been carrying that they're up the whole. Hey, man, more power to you if it was a real weight. I'm glad it's not for her sake, but, you know, it, it is what it is. We are nearing the end of the parade, but if you're just tuning in now, don't worry. We still have a couple of things for you. We also have festivities going on this entire weekend with Gator Growl tonight, the homecoming Gator Nation tailgate, and the Gators versus Missouri game that's kicking off noon tomorrow in the swamp. Be there or be square. Yeah, be square because you're not around. Get it? Good one. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the actual origin of the phrase. Uh, I will have to be fact-checked. I hope I didn't Absolutely. make a fact error on air. Thank you once again to the University of Florida Alumni Association for sponsoring this broadcast. Without their support, this broadcast would not be possible. So again, thank you so much to all of our alumni around tuning in, whether that's WUFT, YouTube, Facebook. We appreciate you tuning in with us this morning. It's been an absolute pleasure and honor to join you and to come into your homes wherever you're joining us from, whether that's on WUFT TV, WUFT.org, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you are watching from and however you you are watching. Thank you for joining us for the 2022 University of Florida Homecoming Parade. We hope to see you out on the streets next year. Absolutely. And while the parade is done, the festivities are just beginning. So wherever you are, we're happy to see that you're tuning in. It's great to be a Florida Gator now, today, tomorrow, every single day.
blue and orange, that's where it's at. Absolutely. And if you're watching us on WUFT TV, PBS Kids programming is next. Hey, I love Sesame Street. I love all the PBS Kids shows. <laughs> that's what I grew up on. Absolutely. Thank you once again for joining us. I'm Ophelia Jacobson. And I'm Sean Humphrey. It's been a pleasure to be in your homes this morning. Peace.